G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia and the market's still going down. I mean it is a little bit up from sort of where it was. I think this was down around $1.8 trillion. So it's come up a little bit uh, from there but still down generally overall uh, in the market uh, down 3.4%. Oh, that's a little bit weird. It was 1.8 now. Uh, it says 3.4, but it's down. So I'm guessing it must have been a little bit higher somewhere along the way. All right, Bitcoin dominance continues to drop. ETH dominance continues to rise. Uh, and ETH gas prices, wow, I haven't seen them that low in... Uh, I can't even remember how long. It's got to have been many, many months since it was that low. Right, we can see things have sort of changed a little bit now. We've got some green back in there, definitely in the last hour and a little bit in the last 24 hours. But look, when you're looking at the seven day stuff, it's generally just down. So let's have a look. All right, what's really, you know, what's really pumped? There might not be anything that's really pumped, but has anything pumped in the last 24 hours? We can definitely see a very tiny amount of green here in the top. All right, what do we got? All right, there you go. Look, miracles will never cease. Wink's, Wink has absolutely pumped in 24 hours, but it is still down 14% over seven days, so that's weird. Maybe we found the bottom, maybe we haven't. Uh, Pirate Chain doing really well again. I wouldn't touch that with anything. The, these meme coins, I mean, yeah, why would you name something Pirate Chain uh, if you wanted it to really be something that would really do something? Yeah, and R is a ticker. God, I don't know, you know, who invests in this kind of stuff. Look, I don't know anything about it, so, you know, I'll play fair. Maybe there's something really good about it, but that is a ridiculous name and a ridiculous uh, kind of, you know, ticker for it. I just, it makes me think the whole thing's a joke. That's really sort of where I am with that. All right, BitTorrent, Celsius Network, Helium, VeChain, Compound, Nano. Look, there's there's some pretty good gains there, but... You know, considering again the whole market is down, I'm wondering that these aren't just some sort of pumps on the way down before it just rolls over again. You know, a little bit like this pump rolled over, pump sort of traveled sideways, roll over, pump, and maybe it continues to go down. That's what we're not sure of at the moment. And again, we'll have a look at the charts very shortly. All right, so there's some things that have done all right, which is good. And again, anything over 15%. Uh, for gains, that's a pretty good gain uh, in my eyes in 24 hours. But again, we're still in a downward trend overall for a lot of these and the market cap is down. So what hasn't done well in the last 24 hours? What's kind of, you know, been smacked around a bit? And I'm going to say there is something that, that is going to be a couple, not something. There's going to be a number of things that have probably been hit pretty bad. All right, Bitcoin, gold. Oh, there you go. I stand to be corrected. Not too much got hit uh, very badly at all. Bitcoin gold definitely did. And again, I was talking about this the other day that it had a bit of a pump. I just, I couldn't understand why. There's not really anything happening with Bitcoin gold. It's just a fork. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. Aave's down. So again, that's something that I really like and uh, I'll be looking to buy into that. I don't know if 328 is the price I want to buy into it at. But hey, look, anything under $400 uh, would have been an absolute steal not that long ago. Thor chain. So really, there were some gains in there, which again, I don't know how that's working on the market cap. We saw some pretty good gains and some very sort of minimal losses. But anyway, it says the market cap is down, so I'll just have to uh, trust that it's not a glitch or something. Because again, look, we just go back to the gains. There's a number of gains there, and they're quite good. I mean, look, we're gains, 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 gains. And then we go to the losses. Only one really bad sort of loss above 15 percent then everything i mean we're already getting down into sort of single digits so i'm not sure how that works synthetics network taken up 14 dollars i am i'm in i'm buying more <laughs> I, I love this platform again i haven't heard any bad uh news about synthetics network to make me think that that's why it's getting a downturn it's just a, a market correction and look, Chainlink, uh, same thing, down, you know, not that long ago, anything sort of, you know, under $40 would have been a steal. So all these good projects, and again, that's not financial advice, that's my personal opinion, nothing's changed. The projects are still good, unless there's been some news that come out that says they're bad. This is just the market got a little bit overheated for a while, and sweet, not a problem. I'm buying more of the dip. Synthetics Network, Chainlink, Filecoin, 
Bitcoin probably needs to come a little bit lower f for me and possibly even Ethereum, but there's a number of other projects that I'll be getting into. So again, interesting that there was, you know, the, the losses weren't too much and there were some really good gains there, but overall the market cap's down. Yeah, strange. All right, that's uh, the market cap there. Let's go to the Bitcoin chart and have a look what's going on. So very, very interesting. Bitcoin is holding that 100 day moving average very, very nicely at the moment. I mean, we can sort of scan in. And what I did is I drew a little bit of a box in here and this is where we really have some support. So some old resistance should become support again. And likewise, some old uh, you know, support lines could possibly hold as well. So at the moment, the 100 day moving average, this is this one here, seems to be what's holding. But if it breaks, I'd be looking for it to bounce somewhere around about here. So from sort of $46,000 to possibly all the way down to around about $41,000. Somewhere in about here is where I think Bitcoin could find support. But it might not. It might actually come down to somewhere around about sort of, well, actually I was going to say down here, but that's below the 200-day uh, moving average. So really, if you know, kind of 41-ish thousand doesn't hold, then I'm thinking somewhere between 41,000 and 34,000 dollars. And again, you know, a lot of people will really start to panic if Bitcoin falls, you know, below the 100-day moving average. Definitely, if it doesn't hold at the top here at 46,000. And they will lose their mind if it goes below sort of 41,000, 40,000. But that is the psyche of an untrained investor. Again, this is just a market correction. We didn't reach the peak. This is not the cycle. You know, we've seen what pa uh, parabolic stuff looks like, and it's more like this. So if we didn't hit it there, it's not going to run up a little bit more and then travel sideways. It just falls off a cliff. This is just we're a bit oversold. And things need to cool down and all the weak hands have got to get out and all the strong hands have got to stay. And the strong hands will collect more. That's what they'll do. That's what I'm doing. And again, you make your own mind up about whether you think I'm a, you know, uh, you know, a, a long-term supporter and have strong hands or not. But for me, that's exactly what I believe in. And in this green box, that is, that's a buying opportunity right there. I mean, it already is. If it's made it to here before, 64 sort of thousand, Chances are at some stage it's going to make it there again and go back higher. We just don't know how, it, how much lower it's going to go, but anything lower than that means it's a buying opportunity. It's just about how long you're going to have to wait to recoup uh, those gains. And look, it could be a couple of years. I could be completely wrong. A lot of us on YouTube and Twitter and that could be completely wrong. And maybe this is the bear market. I just I, I can't see it. I don't see anything that makes me think that. This just looks like a correction. I mean, look at that for a correction over here. We went for how long? So what's that? 19 days and we lost 30% from Bitcoin. That was, uh, you know, kind of the... The longer correction and one of the sort of big ones. I don't think this one was quite 30%. It could be, but it didn't last as long. So this was 19 days. All right, so far, this one has lost about the same, but it's only taken sort of, well, what are we, 11, yeah, 10 days. So there you go. This, this is almost equal with that. It just hasn't taken quite as long. So again, this is nothing to really fret about at least in my opinion. And again, I can't offer you financial advice. I have to say that all the time. This is just a buying opportunity and that's what I'm taking. And if by some chance it gets down into this green sort of box here, this green range, I think anywhere between 46,000 and 41,000 is a really, really good buying opportunity. But it's not to say it couldn't go lower. But as I've said, if it makes it down to this kind of 200 day moving average, 34,000, I am literally throwing everything I can at it. And if it goes lower, I'll just continue to buy. Uh, yeah, that's that's me. That's my mindset. You know, I've been over this a few times, so you know where I'm at. And again, so for the chart analysis, this is the zone I'm really looking at. It's already holding that 100, but it's very early in the weekend. So sad day here in Australia, still Friday over in the States. It could go lower, and I would really expect it to probably bounce around the 46, 47,000 K mark. But if it doesn't, I really do think somewhere in between 46 uh, and 41,000 is where there's going to be a lot of buying pressure 
Is it going to be enough to hold it up? I don't know, but I would think it is. And I will start to buy Bitcoin if it gets below 46,000. That's kind of really where I'm looking at. I could start to buy here because this might be the bounce point. But, you know, I just think there's better opportunities elsewhere. And I already have a reasonable amount of Bitcoin. I mean, it's never enough and it's not enough to retire and all the rest of it. Maybe one day in 10 years time, uh, it could be. So I just think there's better opportunities in certain altcoins at the moment. But I absolutely do plan to take some of those profits at the end and put them back into Bitcoin and other things that I've spoke about. All right, let's move on. There were some actual really good stories and I didn't think we were going to get too many. All right, Charles Schwab will launch cryptocurrency services to its multi-million user base if the US establishes clearer regulations. So this is where a lot of the places are. They want clearer regulations uh, and the sort of industry to be cleaned up a little bit because there are bad players out there. But look, even in the most regulated spaces, there's still bad players. You need to remember that. Just because you've got regulation doesn't mean all of a sudden it's completely safe and no one can get wrecked and there's no you know, nefarious kind of stuff going on. It That is not true. And what they put down here was we would like to see more regulatory clarity. And if and when that comes, you should expect Swab to be a player in that space in the same way it has been a player in other investment opportunities across the spectrum. So there you go. So they were founded back in 1971. Uh, they've been around for a while. You know, that's before I was even born. And they have uh, products for 32 million brokerage accounts. Uh, you know, they're a pretty big company. They've been around for a while. And they got over 3 trillion uh, AUM. So that's assets under management. That, that's a lot of money. 3 trillion. That's more than the total crypto market cap. So yeah, very, very interesting. You know, it's just another big player that's on the sidelines waiting to get in, but you know, they really need things to be as safe as they possibly sort of can for them. And they want it to be a lot like the old system that they're used to as well. So there's you know, a bit of ebb and flow there about why they haven't got in. Yeah, they want more clarity, but more so they really want it to be like the old system. And you know, hopefully it never gets like the old system where they can just manipulate it and sort of crush everybody else, the big players. Uh, but that is my belief anyway, which is part of the reason why they're still waiting. Clarity is a very smaller part of it, I, I would say, in my opinion. All right, the battle between the SEC and XRP. I mean, just rip, Ripple, I should say. XRP is the currency. Ripple is the, the business. It just keeps heating up. So the Securities and Exchange Commission is asking the court to limit Ripple's access to internal documents accusing the company of trying to derail the case's primary uh, focus. The Securities and Exchange Commission has accused Ripple of harassment after its executives were granted access to internal documents from the regulatory body. Look, I think it's fair. They deserve to, you know, see, you know, what information is going to be used against them and how it's going to be used and all that. That's generally how cases sort of work. Now, the documents allegedly contain information about three currencies, so Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP, where the SEC classified the three of them as digital currencies. Now the SEC wants to limit access to these documents, claiming they are irrelevant to the case. Oh, look, yeah, this is such an interesting case and it's been going on for a while now. And who knows where this is going to end up? But what I can say is if we go back here, we have a look at the price of XRP. It's back down near a dollar now. It was nearly at $2 for a while and got up to $1.50. It's starting to look like it might be another good buy again. Again, I'm not recommending it because I'm still worried about the case and all the rest of it. But geez, if you can get in at the right times, XRP can have some pretty good pumps and it's been doing that for its entire existence. So, you know, more so for a trading thing. I mean, if you believe in XRP and have a small bag left over, I still hope they can do what they were setting out to do. But if the SEC really hammers them, then, you know, it'll just make that hard. Still waiting for my flare drop from the XRP that I had as well. So, you know, maybe if XRP doesn't really work out, then flare suddenly uh, becomes that kind of, things similar to XRP that'll do what it was supposed to do with smart contracts and all the rest of it. So keeping an eye out for that. All right, Gemini users, they can now buy Bitcoin with Apple Pay and Google Pay. <sighs> Gemini is pretty big and Apple Pay and Google Pay are massive. So according to a Thursday announcement, Gemini users can now connect their debit cards 
to Apple Pay or Google Pay for buying crypto with fiat on the platform. So it's just another on-ramp that's made even easier again. And this is going to continue to happen and continue to happen and continue to happen. So, yeah, again, the information's all there. It's just whether you choose to want to acknowledge it and believe it, that this is the direction that we're moving in. But it doesn't start off with a click of the fingers and everybody's onto it. This is literally how it starts. Small bits and pieces here and there, and it slowly starts to build. And it is one of the reasons why I think the crypto space is going to be the you know, one of the best places to make some really good gains over the next, you know, maybe five to ten years. You know, I really have moved away from thinking that this is the year for the big major adoption. It's not. This is the year for the early adopters of, of the, you know, wider uh, population. It's still going to be small. You know, we're getting all these, you know, on ramps on board and big businesses and they're going to get their positions and then they're going to open up to the rest of the world. So I still think that's yet to come. I think this cycle now, this is, you know, again, not financial advice, my personal opinion, is that we're going to see a lot of manipulation and stuff going on in the market and the big players, you know, getting themselves set and ready before they then really open it up to the rest of the world as they catch on again and see, oh, Bitcoin, because they'll be shaken out at the moment. Oh, Bitcoin was worth $64,000 only, you know, 11 days ago. And now it's worth, you know, $50,000 and on the way down. And that's all they're going to hear and all they're going to see. They're not going to see this all that it's done these kind of retracements before and continued to go higher that will be missed all right paxos so the stablecoin issuer has nabbed a banking license but it doesn't mean they'll be doing any kind of banking in the traditional sense so the bank label is somewhat misleading in that paxos will not immediately be handling deposits Instead, they receive a fintech charter, and that's a type of banking charter that was pioneered by former acting uh, controller of the currency, Brian Brooks. So we've got a number of places, uh, crypto sort of uh, exchange, uh, yeah, I mean, Kraken got a banking sort of license, and there's a couple others that are now heading into this space. And I do think they will be basically the new, the new banks, the banks of the future. The old banks will you know, migrate into this kind of stuff. Uh, because I really do think uh, cryptocurrencies and, you know, stable coins in the cryptocurrency space and all that, they are the future. This is where we're heading. Everything's going to be digital. We won't have fiat systems and that old, you know, old walled garden banking system that is going to die off. Uh, it will be sad if, unfortunately, they migrate over to here and just simply turn this into the old system. Although I'm just not sure they can do that with the way these things are set up. But look, who knows, time will tell. But at the moment, I still think it's a great time to get in. I think we're very, very early. I, I think there's still probably another cycle or two left of, you know, quite big gains. But again, let's just watch out for the big losses that come with the big gains. All right, governing body. So Louisiana recently gave a shout out to Bitcoin's success uh, in a new resolution. So again, Bitcoin's being mentioned in things like parliament and governments and all sorts of stuff. And this is what they said. Therefore, it be resolved that the House of Representatives of the Legislature, Legislature of Louisiana does hereby commend Satoshi Nakamoto for his contribution to economic security, said House Resolution Number 33 from, Rep, from uh, Representative Mark Wright. How is it all this stuff can be happening and people are still bearish on the price and say, oh no, nah, it's going to get regulated and it's going to be closed and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. I'll tell you why, because the story is like this. So South Korea's top financial regulator suggests all crypto exchanges could be shut down. They won't be. They most certainly won't be. So the head of South Korea's financial regulatory agency has created a controversy by saying all the country's cryptocurrency exchanges could be shut down in September. Look, I suppose there's a very small element of truth. Could they be? Like, is it possible that it could happen? Yeah, sure. They could just say, all right, we're closing them all down. That's what the government does and that's what happens. Do you think that's what they're really going to do? Considering how big this space is, how much adoption is happening, do you think they're really going to do that? How much money there is in these things and that, you know, the taxes and that that the governments can make? 
they're not going to do that. The, the issues at the moment is the regulation. They're not, they're not regulated enough for all these big places. You know, and it's all this kind of stuff, anti-money money, uh, laundering laws and things like that, you know, and KYC, making sure that they know who's using these exchanges and where the money's going in that. Once they get that sorted, then again, there's nothing slowing cryptocurrencies down after that. And that stuff is coming. And I don't have a problem with that kind of regulation. I don't care if people can see what I'm doing with my money. It's still my money. I'm still doing what I want with it. It's just there's a track there so people can see. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm not doing anything crooked. So you can see where my money's going. There's, you know, uh, it's traceable. So you can see that I'm not doing anything illegal. Cool. My only issue is that if you then try to stop me doing what I want with my money simply because you don't like it, not because it's illegal or not because, uh, yeah, there's any kind of that kind of stuff going on, nothing illegal. It's just simply for whatever reason, my bank doesn't like that. And we've already seen that. There's banks all around the world that have cracked down, you know, HSBC and others saying, oh, we won't have uh, anything to do with businesses that are dealing in cryptocurrencies. That's the kind of stuff that we can't have. If it's not illegal, there should be no reason that anyone should be able to do anything or have any say about how you spend your money. Completely different story if it's illegal, I agree. If it's illegal, then we have to have ways to stop it. But if it's just simply frowned upon by some people, too bad, so sad. It's not your money. And I agree, they have the right to say we don't want to do business with those people. Cool, but in no way, shape or form should they be able to stop anyone else from doing that kind of stuff. That's where I would have an issue with, you know, over-regulation. But, you know, anything other than that, I don't care if people can see what I'm doing with my money. I don't have anything to hide. All right, almost done, nearly there. Coinbase stocks, I did say this, that I didn't want to jump in initially. And it seems that I might have been right. I don't know if I'm ready to buy just yet, but I probably should. But anyway, coin. So that's the Coinbase uh, ticker. Closed at $291 per share, down from a high of $430. So that is a 32% decline from its opening uh, day high of, again, $430. So again, I think this might be a time to start to look at this. And, you know, now you know why uh, all the Coinbase people sold, because it was they're smart that's the hype the first day the you know that's when things are going to be a little bit crazy it's not that they couldn't not sell and simply hold for higher prices you know years down the track they obviously can but they probably knew there was going to be some hype sold at a good price and they could even be buying back in now and basically sort of you know getting even more shares plus profit so yeah for me, this is where I'm starting to be interested in these shares. I might have to go uh, and have a look you know, at them right now and buy, but I'm just not sure where the market is yet. And again, you know, you can never time it exactly right. So maybe I end up buying at 430 because 290 is the bottom and it only goes up. So be it. But for now, I'm just, you know, the market's more in a downturn. I want to see a bottoming out uh, kind of thing before I start to jump into anything. Other than in the cryptocurrencies, I mean, I'm buying the dip. I don't know exactly when it's going to get to the bottom and I'm happy to continue to buy on the way down because the explosive growth of them will far outweigh this. I mean, $291 to get to $430, that's, you know, like maybe a 50% gain. And that's going to take a while. That won't just kind of happen in a couple of days. Well, I suppose it's gone down that much in a couple of days, so it could. But again, the, the growth of cryptocurrencies in a bull market I've never seen anything like it, as long as you're in good projects, and I believe I am. So that's me. I'm getting into those. All right, last but not least, the big three of Aave, Compound, and MakerDAO collectively had a great record one. So Q1, uh, quarter one, whatever you want to call it. Quarter two is where we are now, starting a little bit off to the downside. Now, again, I think we've probably got some more downside before we start to see some upside. But once the upside starts, it, it's going to come hard and fast. It always does. So Aave Compound and MakerDAO collectively held more than $25 billion. That is a lot of money uh, in DeFi. And there's other places that have got even more. I mean, let's go and have a look. I haven't had a look at DeFi Pulse for quite some time. Where are we? DeFi Pulse. Where? What's the total value locked up there right now? 54. 
4.73 billion. I can remember when this was like, you know, not even 10 billion. It was like 9 billion, 8 billion, 7 billion. And we're all, you know, like imagine if this goes double digits and now we're halfway to 100 billion. And look, again, I can't say this enough. I think DeFi is such an exciting place. I think this really is the revolution of finances in the future. Not all of these things are going to be good and stick around forever. But I think, you know, Aave I like, Uniswap I like, Compound Maker I like. I don't have any of them. I don't have any Uniswap either. But yeah, I think there's, if you can find the right projects in DeFi and, you know, get your tokens and, you know, you know, if you're good enough to trade, you know, when they're at a high and buy back when they're at a low, congratulations. Or if you just simply buy and hold, I shudder to think what they might be worth in the future. Because, I mean, money is the biggest thing that we have. There's nothing really bigger than money. Well, that's not true. There are some other things that are up there with it. Real estate and uh, equities and, um, you know, assets and things like that. But money's just big anyway. And, and this is the new money. So I really do think this is big. All right, that's it from me. Anyway, Saturday, well, just gone Saturday uh, afternoon here in Australia now. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, you're doing extremely well. And I'll see you next time.